Are there any kids upstairs today? Yeah. Are you guys excited to be here today? Awesome. My name is Pastor Haley, and I'm the children's here at Gateway. Um, and normally I don't preach very often, but it seems I preach a lot lately, so <laughs> you get to see a lot of me. <laughs> um, but today, uh, I just want to dive right in, so why don't you pray with me? Jesus, I thank you for your presence. Doesn't everyone just take a deep breath? Just breathe in his presence this morning. Thank you that you are here. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you are for us. And I thank you that we get to partner with you in what you want to do here on the earth. We love you, God, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Everyone said? Amen. Amen. Okay, last week, Pastor Landon, um, he shared a bit about our evening with um, John and Carol or not, and how um, that evening has sparked, we believe, has sparked a move of God. He talked about being royal priests and how God has lit the fire, but as royal priests, it is our responsibility to keep that fire burning. He talked about worship being one of those ways that we keep that fire burning, and not just singing, but actually laying down your life as an act of worship letting your life be a song to him. He also talked about how this part of this move is gonna be um, walking in holiness. And he said that holiness is walking in, is purity walked out, or lived out, walked out. So holiness is being set apart for God and that happens when we live in purity. So this morning, I wanna talk about greater purity. Everyone say greater purity. Nice. So I'm talking about spiritual purity today. There are other kinds of purity, but I'm talking about spiritual purity. To be spiritually pure is to have a pure heart. And a pure heart loves only God. A pure heart loves only God. If you have your Bibles this morning, does anybody have their Bibles? Does anybody bring their Bibles to church anymore? Is that a thing? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> you can open up to Psalm 24. We're going to start at verse 3. There are two things in this one small little verse that we can learn about a pure heart. This is what it says. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. Does anybody know the very first commandment? Anybody know? Like in the Ten Commandments, does anybody know the first one? You should have no other gods before me. That's right. One who is pure in heart does not trust in idols. Like you guys just said, the very first commandment that the Lord gave his people was you should have no other gods before me. You see, God had made a covenant with his people, Israel. It was a promise that, that God would be their God and that those people would be his people, that the Israelites would be his people. It was a promise that they, that they had made to one another. Now, God knew that the people couldn't actually keep it, so he actually made the covenant with himself, and that's a different story. But um, this, this was so important that they would have no other gods before him. Many times throughout Scripture, you read the Old Testament, and over and over and over again, the Israelites, what did they do? They fall away from God. God says, I love you, you're my people. And they're like, yeah, we'll be your people. And then they go and make a golden calf. Like right after. And God's like, what? How could they already forget about me? And then after living in their sin, after, after experiencing the consequences of their sin, they realize, oh my goodness, God, we need you to save us. Would you save us? And so in his kindness and his love, and he goes and he rescues them. And then again, they're his people and he's their God. But then not long afterwards, they go and they worship idols. They turn to false gods. 
and they experience the consequences of their sin and they cry out again and then God goes and he rescues them. Has anybody read the book of Hosea recently? Okay, it is like the most beautiful thing ever. Hosea, in Hosea, God demonstrates how he longs for his people to come back to him and to remain faithful to him. You see, the Israelites were not pure in heart. They were not spiritually pure. They did not love God alone. Hosea 7 verse 13 to 15 says this, Woe to them because they have strayed from me. Destruction to them because they have rebelled against me. This is God speaking. I long to redeem them. Did you hear that? I long to redeem them, but they speak about me falsely. They do not cry out to me from their hearts, but wail on their beds. They slash themselves, appealing to their gods for grain and wine, but they turn away from me. They do not turn to the Most High. If you flip over in Hosea to chapter 11, I just want to show you a glimpse of the Father's heart. Kids, are you ready for this? Are you ready to catch a glimpse of the Father's heart? First people, okay, Hosea 11, 1 to 4 says this, when Israel was a child, so when the nation of Israel was a child, I, I loved him. And out of Egypt, kids, do you remember how, um, how the Israelites were slaves in Egypt? Yeah, well, God called them out of Egypt. He rescued them. He says, I call my son. But the more they were called, the more they went away from me. They sacrificed to Baals and burned incense to images. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by the arms, but they did not realize it was I who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness and with ties of love. To them, I was like one who lifts a little child to the cheek, and I bent down to feed them. Can we just all like take that in for a moment? This is the love of the Father. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. We may not have idols of stone or wood in our homes. We might not bow down to images, but there may be things in our lives that we deem more important than our relationship with Jesus. An idol is anything you love more than God. I've heard it said this way. It's anything you have to ask permission before you say yes to Jesus. Does that make sense? Yeah. It could be work. It could be TV. Kids, it could be your iPad. Maybe you love your iPad more than you love to spend time with Jesus. It could be money. It could be clothes. It could be food. It could be another person. It could be TikTok. It could be video games. What I sense the Father speaking to us this morning sounds a lot like how we spoke to the Israelites. This is what he's saying. The Father saying, I want to comfort you, but you find comfort in people and places other than me. I long to share the secrets of my heart with you, but you spend your time on other things and you do not hear me. I want to invite you to partner with me in what I'm doing, but you're distracted by what is temporary and have lost sight of what is eternal. I have given you all of my heart, and I'm asking for all of yours. The Father is looking for people who will give him all of their heart, not just a part of it, not just most of it, but all of it. A couple months ago, I was listening to a worship um, set on YouTube, and um, they were singing, I just want to move you, Jesus. What moves you? And then the worship leader began to um, spontaneously sing, you have priority. Man, that was like a shot to, to my heart. <laughs> I was like, oh, Jesus, do I give you priority? And I became aware of how I was not giving Jesus priority in my life. You see, there were things that he'd asked me to do. 
He'd asked me to read his word in a certain amount of time. He'd asked me to, to write books for kids. He'd asked me to um, interpret dreams. And if you notice, all of those things are relational. He's calling me to be away with him, but I was like, well, I'm really tired. I don't really want to use my brain right now, so I'm just going to turn the movie on instead. Or... I really just need to laugh, actually. So how about I just watch a YouTube video first, and then I'll maybe do what you asked me to do. Um, but everybody knows that YouTube is like a black hole, so I would get stuck there. You see, I had made an idol of TV and YouTube. He was calling me deeper, but I had given my heart to something else. I had put other things first. Jesus is asking for our whole hearts, not just when we feel like it, not just when it's easy or convenient to say yes. He's looking for people that are wholly devoted to him. Every part of your heart. When we become aware of idols in our lives, it's really important for us to deal with them seriously. You can't be gentle with them. The enemy is not gentle about trying to distract you from Jesus. So we cannot be gentle with idols. You can't half-heartedly decide that you don't want it anymore. You have to cut it out so it doesn't sneak back in. So in my life, I have cut out TV and YouTube because I know that even if I watch one thing, I may be tempted to let it pull me away again. And I just, I'm at a place where I'm like, I just don't want anything between me and Jesus anymore. Just nothing. I just want to give him my whole heart and I don't want to hold anything back. Because that's where life is. That's where joy is. That's where peace is. That's where wholeness is. To be pure in heart is to love the Lord your God with all, everyone say all, your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. It doesn't say love the Lord your God, kind of, with your heart, and maybe with your soul, and probably with your mind. Is that what it says, kids? No. <laughs> it says love the Lord your God with all that you are. Love the Lord your God with all that you are. The second thing we can learn from Psalm 23, 24, sorry. Who can ascend to the mountain of the Lord? So the first thing to remind you, a pure heart does not trust in idols. Secondly, one who is pure in heart will see God. Wow, what a promise. Is that not amazing? Okay, so Psalm 24 says there are two things, or it says, sorry, it says, who can ascend to the mountain of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? Both of those speak to moments of encounter with God, moments of seeing God, moments of knowing God. Okay, I have a picture I want to show you guys. Should be on the big screen. I'm sure you've seen this. Um, have you guys ever seen this picture before? Okay, so what you, I want you to do for the next 30 seconds, I'm going to time you. I want you to stare at these four dots, or you can look at the big one. Don't look anywhere else. You can only look at the four dots. So starting now, just at the four dots. Don't let your eyes wander. Kids, are you doing it? Okay, we still got like 15 seconds left. Is everybody doing it? Okay. Everybody close your eyes. What do you see? What do you see? Jesus. It's you. When you stare only at these four dots, only at the four dots for 30 seconds, you close your eyes and you can see Jesus. When you give your whole heart 
to only Jesus, you focus your heart's attention on only Jesus, you will see him. If you were to look at any other part, like if you were to like kind of look around during those 30 seconds or even like stare at a different part of his face or this picture, you wouldn't see Jesus. In the same way, if we, if we divide our heart up and give our heart to different things, we're not going to see Jesus in a way that we could if we gave him everything. Are you guys following? Is that not exciting to anybody? Like, Jesus is the best thing ever. Jesus is the prize. Guys, when this life is over, it's just Jesus. Nothing else is worth it. Everything else is temporary. But he is eternal. Our connection with him is eternal. Jesus promises in Matthew 5, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. To be pure in heart is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind. We've been talking about this move of God that has started. We're only going to see God if we give him our whole hearts. And by see kids, I mean like get to know who he is. He'll start revealing his heart to us. I mean, he's already doing it, but maybe we're not catching it because we're, we haven't given him our whole heart. But we're going to see God move when we live completely devoted to him. When our hearts align with his, we will be able to more fully partner with him in bringing heaven to earth. And how do we fully align our hearts with his? We give him everything. We focus our heart's attention only on him. God wants all of you. He wants all your love. Let me tell you what purity isn't. I feel like purity can be one of those things that become really, becomes really legalistic. But that's not what God intended. It's not about writing up a list of things that you can and cannot do to remain pure. You see, Pharisees, the people that were experts in God's law, they did that, and Jesus called them whitewashed tombs, meaning they looked great on the outside. They looked like they were committed to God based on what they did, but they were dead inside. There was no life inside of their hearts. It was all about performance, not love. Everyone say, performance not love, but that's not what God wants. Last year, um, anybody like chocolate? Okay, seriously, I have to be in a special mood to eat candy, um, but I could always eat chocolate. Like, I love chocolate, and so last year, the Lord actually was like, I want you to stop eating chocolate this year. I was like, okay, I'll do it. (laughs) Because you asked me to, I'll do it. A few months later, I was at my sister's birthday party, and my brother had made this cake with a white chocolate frosting in between the layers. So, like, really delicious. But I was like, do you know what? I won't have any cake because it has chocolate in it. And they were like, that's ridiculous. Just eat the cake. It's hardly any chocolate. But in my heart, this was something that was actually was kind of new for me. Because I had the tendency, and I still kind of do sometimes, to lean into performance. But in my heart, I was like, do you know what? I actually just love Jesus too much to eat it. I know it's not that much, and I know that he probably wouldn't even care. But I just love him, and I don't want to eat it because I love him. I don't want anything to get between us. It's about love, not performance. And I find myself in this place again after a year of, of what, being in COVID, super hard, but then also it's so easy to get distracted when you're trying to just keep on going and you're hoping that things will change, but they're still the same. And so I, I just got, if I'm going to be honest, I got distracted this year. I really did. 
But I find myself in this place again where it's like, Jesus, I don't want anything to come between us. I just want to love you and to know you and be known by you. I just want to respond to the call that you are saying. You are, you are pursuing my heart and I have turned away from you. But Jesus, here I am again and I'm responding to that pursuit and I say, yes, here's my whole heart. Here's all of it, all of my time. You get priority. Real purity is about loving your relationship with God and protecting it at all costs. Scared of anything, sin, idols, that has gotten in between you and him because it's about relationship. So my question for you this morning, is there anything in your life that you love more than Jesus? Or are you being obedient to anything other than Jesus? That could be fear, could be worry, could be the opinions of others. So right now, um, I just wanna invite you all to close your eyes, kids included. And, I, and Holy Spirit, I just invite you to take your flashlight. God, our hearts are open. Holy Spirit, come take your flashlight and show us if we love something more than you. I feel Jesus is inviting you. Actually, I'm just going to invite the van, the van to come up. Jesus is inviting you to come to the altar and to lay those things down today. He's inviting you to get back to a place of love, not performance, love. He wants to show himself to you. He wants to take your relationship with him to a deeper level. He is jealous for your heart. We were made for him, and he wants all of your heart. Are you willing to love and protect your relationship with God at all costs? The worship team is going to lead us in first love. And I, I, I want you to come to the front and to lay down those things that you have been holding on just a little too tightly. And I want to invite you to recommit your whole heart to Jesus. The reward is that we will see him. So yeah, come on up. Come on up. Come respond to the the call of the Father.